Hello, my name is Courtney, and this is Dog Yoga and Massage. I'm here today with Fanny and Nut to demonstrate how to spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with your pet, giving your undivided attention to your furry friend. Dog yoga is intended to be fun with no expectations for your pet, just enjoying each other's company. It's not important whether you're new to yoga or if you've been practicing for years. It's about bonding with your dog. Here are a few tips before you get started. Walk or run your dog first to burn off extra energy. Find a quiet place to practice with few distractions. Be patient and respectful with your dog. Be gentle, paying close attention to areas of tightness or sensitivity. Talk to and praise your dog. Rub and pet them often. Have fun. Dogs live in the present moment. They are aware of everyday tasks and they know how to relax. Dogs have no worries. They accept themselves just as they are and they don't compare themselves to other dogs. These are lessons we can learn from our dogs. Listen to your dog. Your dog is teaching you what it means to be in the present moment. Let's get started. Seated or lying next to your dog, place your hand on the dog and observe his or her breath. Is it short and shallow or long and deep? Begin to focus on your breath, trying to deepen your breath into the back and belly. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose with the intention of calming the mind and body. Dogs observe our body language. Our body language sends a message to our pets. If we are stressed, tense, anxious, sad, or worried, our dogs react. By concentrating on our breath, we grow more peaceful and relaxed. In turn, our dogs become quiet and still. We start with canine massage to get the dog a little more relaxed before we move into some different yoga postures. And one really nice way to start is taking your hand from the top of your dog's head and very gently, just so they know you're there, bringing your hand all the way down their back, down their spine, until you can come all the way to their tail. And if they let you go down their tail, you can do that as well. Just a couple times, very gentle touch so they know that you're there. And then we can begin taking our thumb and our first finger and gently pulling the skin all the way from the head down towards the hips. So taking your way all the way down the spine each vertebrae at a time, and noticing if there's any tight spots. Fanny's an older dog, so she is tighter in her hips and her back, and she has less skin to pull in this area, and a, a bad low back, so she doesn't love when I pull on her hips as much. So if the dog gives you any sign of discomfort, please stop. Now bringing your three fingers between the dog's eye and ear, make gentle circles. And you can go in both directions, observing that your dog may be more relaxed here, maybe yawning or shutting their eye. And then working the hands all the way up the dog's ears gently rubbing the ears and coming down the neck, still making gentle circles, beginning to work down the chest, either with fingers if you have a small dog, if you have a larger dog like Fanny, I can move into fists because she has a larger chest and a very tight chest. And dogs put a lot of their body weight in their front end, so they're often very, very tight in their chest from jumping out of backs of cars or playing with other dogs. Then we work our hands all the way down the dog's front legs, working in the same direction of the dog's fur. 
And actually, sometimes it feels good to them too to work against the direction of their fur. It's more stimulating. And then maybe grabbing a hold of the dog's foot if they allow you to, making little circles under each toe. This is also a nice way to get your dog familiar with nail trimmings so they know you can play with their feet and it's okay, doing both sides. And then we move to the dog's rear end, back end. Again, Fanny's an older dog, so her, her hips, she has a lot of arthritis in her hips. So you have to be really careful as far as moving her hips around. Gently grabbing one hand on the lower part of the leg and the other hand up by the dog's knee and pressing the foot in, bending and extending the dog's knee. Getting a nice stretch through the quadricep muscle, but again, being respectful of your dog. And then very small, shaking the dog's leg to open up the hip. Fanny has tight hips. So she doesn't have a whole lot of range of motion right here, but it probably feels really nice on her. We can walk our hands all the way back to the dog's lower back, to their sacrum, and again, little circles on the back end. And then finding this piece of skin behind the dog's heel, ankle, with your thumb and your first finger and pressing into that area, it's supposed to be a pain reliever. 